Hey guys and girls, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode of Formcraft with myself, Lewis. Hope you're brilliant. Have yourself a great magical day, as always. Now, I have been so busy, like redonkously busy, making things and changing things around. And look on the map, you can see big circular guys. Oh, you're going to be impressed. Oh, and you've probably just noticed Frankie as well. <laughs> he's my little, uh, he's my little flesh helper. He lives down inside there. We can't go down there because, you know, it's only for golems down there. But he lives down there and he makes sure that my crucible is always filled with water. <laughs> what a little guy. Does his thing for me. And he's mega cheap because he's made of flesh. Although I think I managed to get myself a little bat of the warp when I did it. So I've got to be a little bit careful of that. So let me show you very quickly the things that I've been working on before we get to today's agenda. Now, I've made myself a load of deconstruction tables which live down here. These are pretty cool little things and I use them purely for when I run out of any main aspects. And what you can do with these is you can take some items. So if we grab some of this and we pop it in there, it's going to deconstruct it and it will always give you back a primal aspect. Well, it doesn't always give you back. It gives you a chance of giving you back a primal aspect. There we go. There. But, the thing to bear in mind is it will never give you back a, uh, a compound aspect. You'll only ever get a primal aspect. So if something's made of two compound aspects, it'll break them down again. And t until it works its way down to the primal aspects. And that's what those are there for. And they're, you know, they're not bad. They just give me a little extra when I need a bit of a, uh, I need a, a pick-me-up. <laughs> we still got the guys over here doing their thing. They're working very nicely. I've got loads of seeds and many wheats, which is good. And I'll show you that in a minute and over there. And let me take you into here. And I'll show you how they've been doing. I also have some warded things now. Some arcana doors and some arcane pressure plates. They're there per like literally just for aesthetics. I'm not using them how they're meant to be used. They're there just to look good. But the idea behind these is they can only be broken and placed by the person who put them down. So when you're on a server, you can protect yourself. You can also make warded glass and things with all of this as well, which is pretty cool. And you can make keys to lock them so only you can open that door. But at the minute, they're there just to look nice. <laughs> In here, they've been doing well. We've got loads of different beans. It's still pretty slow, but they're starting to do their thing. And we're getting to the point now where we can start mixing our beans together and hopefully getting some compound beans. So I made this area down here where we're we going to do this. Here we go. I'm using water at the minute because I'm waiting to get some elevators. I thought we'd make the elevators on uh, on camera. So this is going to be our compound bean factory where we're going to be doing all of those. Now I came through many different ways of how I wanted this to look. Now everyone generally goes for the kind of squares on top of each other but I thought that was a little bit boring I wanted it to look nice so I made the room like this so we've got all these overhanging areas where they can go and get their beans we've got a nice area where we can walk through here to make it to our chest that should have all our beans in it because I'm gonna have two golems down here one for collecting the beans and one for planting the beans and I've made the room specifically so that one straw golem should be able to harvest this whole area because they'll harvest a nine by nine and uh, well as long as we have this one here and we go out four like that so we have the uh, four on the sides they'll be able to harvest this whole area well they should be able to hopefully so we'll have to wait and see if not I can put some upgrades on it but I think it's gonna work perfectly fine and we should end up getting some good compound aspects and then we have to kind of decide which ones we want to try and get because it's kind of hit and miss although I have a good idea of which ones I would like so we'll get around to doing that soon let me make my way back up my water stream. <laughs> we'll get ourselves some of those uh, some of those airy guys soon so we can get up a lot easier. And another thing I've been doing is I've introduced the Rosa <laughs> to the world. The Rosa, the police. These guys. They go around, they do stuff for me, and they kill any bad guys that may come into the area. Although, I'm missing a Rosa. I don't know where he went. There's meant to be a guarding golem here, and I only have a gathering, so I think he might have uh, bit the dust. Although, over this way, uh, we should have both of the guys inside their little guard tower, looking out over the land, making sure that if any bad guys come near, they do their job. Yes, so we've got two Fulmium golems with loads of upgrades on them, so this guy here has a hat and he has the uh, he has the dart launcher and the mallet and the improved armor and stuff we've got the one with the fez and the, and the glasses so he can see further and he's got the census upgrade so he's got really big range so he can go pick anything up and then inside here i have a chest 
with stuff in it. So we've got some brain, some rotten flesh, and some string. Although one thing I have noticed with the golems is that nothing seems to spawn around them. Now whether that's because I've put the visor upgrade on him, and when he has the visor upgrade, if he kills anything it will drop XP just like a per player killed it and it drops XP. If he doesn't have that on there and he kills something it won't drop the XP because you only get XP drops from when you kill something yourself. So I'm wondering if because I put that on him, it's made him like a player, like a player entity. And because of that, stuff won't spawn in a certain radius around a player, will it? So I wonder if he's just gone and warded this whole area off for me. <laughs> I don't know. But we haven't had many things spawning around here. So let me take you to the big area, the main surprise, the magical area of goodness that I've been working my butt off to try and make for you guys. This is going to be where we do our infusion. Yes, it may seem a bit much for infusion, but you know what? I thought we'd go well. Uh, I thought we'd take it pretty far. So this is going to be the main area. Now, what I've decided to do here is the fo the Fulmic Castle is going to go there. Because I think that's going to look amazing as a castle. And this is going to be the entrance to the castle going along here like this. And then down over this side, this is going to take us to the dock. Now, I noticed inside here for the golem animation calls, there is one for fishing, I think. Decanting. Fishing, yeah. Golem animation call for fishing. So, I'm wondering if I can get my paws on that at some point. Although, I don't think I have the research for it yet. Although, I did just learn the stuff... Uh, oh yeah, we have got it now. Look, there we go, fishing. So, I only got that now because I just got the stuff for the infusion. So that's opened up a couple more, I see. So we've got alchemy, sorting, use, uh, fishing. I learned the one for uh, butcher as well, which are pretty cool. So we'll have to look into these, but these guys are great because what they'll do... Is that the traveling trunk? Oh my god, I've got so much more stuff now that I've <laughs> opened up the infusion crafting. That's insane. Uh, yeah, so what the butching one will do is it will go around and butcher live animals, so it will get you basically food and mob drops and things, but it's quite smart because it will actually, it won't kill, so if it's in an area with say, four cows, it will only kill two cows, because it will bear in mind that you need two to be able to mate another one, and it won't kill babies either, so it's really good in that, I like how it does that. So that's why we're going to have the fishing area down there, and maybe the farm's going off over that way, next to the water, so I have a load of golems down there doing that. And this is where we're going to have the infusion crafting. Now, I wanted this to look a little bit special because, you know, we normally just make an area and we pop it down and bam. But I thought I would try and uh, kind of take a little bit of math into it and try and make it uh, a certain size for a certain reason. So up here is where this is going to be. Now, you're going to have to excuse the dirt because <laughs> I've been trying to measure stuff out with dirt. But uh, if I get rid of all of this, you should be able to see the general gist of what we're looking at here. Let's get rid of these bits. There we go. And you. Cool. Alright. So this is where our infusion crafting majobby is going to be right here. These are going to be all of our pillars where we can place our items for the infusion crafting. And then on the sides along here is where all of our pots of Essentia are going to go. Because there is a certain range that this guy will work. Now, the easiest way to remember it is from the central point, the runic matrix, going out, you're looking around about 12 blocks, either side. So right up here is exactly the length in which we want to have, the ma well, the maximum length we can have our, uh, we can have our, our warded jars that can have our essentia in it. And down there is exactly the range in which we can have the, uh, trinkets so that we can tone down the instability of being able to do our infusion crafting. So that's pretty much the perfect size that we need this for and it looks nice doesn't it so it's going to be pretty cool. Now over here is going to lead into the mountain, the darkest mountain, the depths, where we're going to have <laughs> all of our alchemical thingamabobs, dis our distill distillations, making all of the essentia for us. I haven't decided whether I want to go purely with liquid essentia or if we're going to go with crystallized essentia. Because in the newest versions of Formcraft, you actually have the ability now to crystallize your essentia into a solid with the essential with the essentia crystallization. So as up here, you have nearly mastered the art of turning concrete objects into liquid essentia, so doing the reverse is a simple matter. The essentia crystallizer draws in liquid essentia from a pipe network and slowly converts it into small shards of crystalline essentia. Crystalline essentia is safe to handle and very stable. Mm. So, instead of having jars everywhere, we could keep it all in one chest. 
that's uh, pretty cool, isn't it? Although I'm pretty sure it takes some time. You can go ahead and you can feed it Terra via a Viz laser, and it speeds up the uh, distillation process. But I'm still not 100% sure. I think what I'm going to do is I might have a jar, a couple of jars full of each one. And then everything else can get turned into the crystallized essentia. I think that's the route I'm going to go down. And that little place over there, down there, has nothing in it at all. <laughs> I was going to make a little mob farm. And I got, I kind of got sidetracked. And at the minute it's just a hole in the wall. So there is absolutely zero in there. Now today, what we're going to be working on is I want to go ahead and I want to make all the bits and bobs that we need to start our infusion. I also want to sort out my bean farm. Because I think we should start thinking about mix and matching some beans to get some compound beans. And then with the compound beans, we can go ahead and we can use those to be crystallized or turned into liquid essentia. The main thing that I want to use them for though is for making the balanced shards because they require one of every type of aspect and then well minus one type because you use a shard as your catalyst but that's pretty much what i was hoping to use these the, the uh, six main compounds for or the primal aspects even so let's grab ourselves a couple of bits we're going to want to make something first so i can get down easier and we're going to need Somewhere around here. I have so much new stuff to be playing with now. It's unreal. So I'm kind of <laughs> I'm looking to thinking, oh my god, I want to make this. I want to make this. I want boots. I want to make a brain in the jar. I got quite a lot of warp on the go now. So we got to be a little bit careful. Uh, I, I got the things for the lamp of growth. Yes. But we need better ones. We need, so we have to sum up in the way that the process is, the, the, I think the best thing to do is to figure out a way that we want to go forward. So first things first, we need infusion. Then we need a better wand so that we can handle larger amounts of, uh, of Essentia. And then we can move on to things like making, uh, somewhere around here, pharmaturgy, yes. Node stabilizers so that we can start gathering nodes to create giant nodes and then we can start making lasers to speed things up and then we can look at making better ones of that because we can move on to scepters and staves, which is good. But first things first, let's try and get this done. So out of this, we're gonna wanna make an arcane levitator. And arcane levitators require a few things. We need great wood planks, we need some shards, we need some ingots and we need some night ore. So let's get this. So we need a night ore. We need some great wood. I wonder if I have any great wood planks just laying around. I don't think I do. There we go. Some great wood. We're going to need some iron. Cool, cool. And what else do we need? We need two iron. We need that. We need that. And we need an air shard and an earth shard. Air shard. Earth shard. Brilliant. So let's pop them in here. There we go. And you, and you, and let's just use our babby wand for this, could be an arcane elevator, brilliant, so this should be able to work for me, now an arcane elevator I believe can lift you off about 10 blocks, so uh, you want to make sure that if you're going to go higher than that you need, you can stack them on top of each other, so if you want to go 30 blocks high you can use three arcane levitators on top of each other, and uh, they will work for a redstone signal as well so you can turn them on and off, but for the time being we'll have it just as it is. I want to place this where our water is, so that we can get up and down a lot easier. And then we'll decide which ones we want to go with. So, let's get some dirt. This is going to hurt my legs <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I think we'll be fine. We're going to eat. And can I catch it before it... No. <laughs> can I catch it before it disappears? No. Alright, we're going to want it here. There we go. And I hope we're going to make it to the top. It looks a little bit high. Oh, hey, we made it. I almost broke my legs, but we made it. Maybe it's going to be worth coming up off this side. Yes. <laughs> and then if we uh, to descend, we just hold crouch. So we can go up this way. It's a little bit iffy, but I like it. I might have to make a couple more and come off this way and poof. Great. So we got an easy way of getting up and down. Now let's get ourselves some of these. I was uh, thinking about which type of aspects I would like to try and get my hands on and I couldn't really come up with any because we're going to be using so many different ones like Procantitio was one that I was thinking oh, that could be handy to have but I'm thinking I might just mix a load together so we're going to grab a load of these there we go let's leave five of each type in there yeah let's do that there we go and that should do it, because I'm going to keep some of those because I was thinking of making some balanced shards, so I want to try and keep a few spare. Let's grab our Herba, 
and go back downstairs. And we will start placing these around randomly so that we can start mix and matching our beans. And there we go. So we got a lot of acro around. Brilliant. We've got our this stuff. Place you there. And that. And that. And that. And that. And that. And this is pretty much what we want to do. So we just want to go around. We want to try and add as many different beans as possible. As randomly as possible. Because then we'll get an increased chance of being able to make a, uh, a different type of bean. But they need to be grown near each other. So that's that. Let's throw one of you there. I have a fiery one there. Maybe a uh, you. Let's have one of you there. Cool, cool. You there. And that. And that. And how many left have we got? We haven't got many. Let's try and get these to touch each other. Have you, you, and you. Okay. It's looking alright. We've got a little space down there. And I think that's looking good. Let's put you there. And we'll put you there. Alright. So, now I need to get some golems. <laughs> so I'm going to go craft some golems and I'll be right back. Alright. I got my golems. Let's see if this is going to work. Now, I would like one straw golem to be here. There we go. And he is going to have the census for range. And he'll be gather mode. Bam. Wake up, Mr. Golem. Now, we have another one, which is going to go slap bang here. This should be central for being able to pick up every type. There we go. And we'll put in the improved organization and harvest. Cool beans. All right. So hopefully, he's going to be able to reach every bean around him. Four on either side of him would lead just like a regular farm. So he should be able to do that. Hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> and it's interesting to see what type of beans we're actually going to get. Whether we're going to get some different types, some weird ones. I am pretty excited to see what we get. And hopefully this little guy here is going to be able to do his job from over there and reach this whole area. As we get more, we can start planting more and such. And if we get a really good one that we find we're using a lot of, we can set another farm up somewhere else, get another silverwood, and make another small magic forest biome, and then set up some small areas just for that one type of bean. And I do think Precantitio is probably going to be one of those. There are a couple of other things that I would like to mass produce in bean form as well. Uh, Sano is one of them because Sano, Sano is one of those ones that's a little bit annoying to get your hands on because you can only use things like golden apples and healing potions and whatnot. So maybe Sano could be one that we could look into as well. But there we go. All right, so let's get on with doing some infusion because this is going to need to be done. And there is quite a bit to make for this. So let's have a looky see. Infusion. First up, we're going to need a runic matrix. So we're going to need arcane stones, we're going to need air shards, we're going to need arcane stones more, we need lots of different types of shards, four of one type of shard, although we might be able to mix and match. And we're also going to need a load of these arcane pedestals. But first thing first, we're going to need arcane stone. So arcane stone requires stone and air shards. I think down here, I should have a load of stone because I was cooking loads up while I was making all the stuff. Yeah, there we go. So we should be able to use a load of this. Now, I think I'm just going to make a load, and then I can go off and get more stuff from all of the uh, nodes that I've marked on my mini-map. So, which ones have we got a lot of? we got a lot of air. So it's that. With that. And should we just use up everything else that we've got in here? It's probably a good shout. Let's just make a load of these. There we go. Cool beans. And we're going to want some of you. Okay, that should do it. That should be just enough. Arcane pedestals, runic matrixes. I made way too many arcane stone bricks, but that's fine. We can find a use for those at some point. Um, and how am I doing for wand juice? Uh, it's actually not that bad, although it used up a load of uh, auto for making the runic matrix, but that's fine. So let's go and set this guy up. Now I'm going to need some more I'm actually going to need a fair bit more of this to be able to activate it but we should be able to at least be able to set it up now so let's go and do this now I'm going to go throw down the pedestals first so we'll have the first pedestal here and we'll put them here like this now rule of thumb for anything that you do with fusion 
make sure it's symmetrical. Because <laughs> any time something isn't symmetrical, you induce instability. And we definitely do not want that to happen. So placement of your pedestals, placement of your, uh, your, your instability reducers, or artifacts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, try and make it all symmetrical. Even when placing items on top of the arcane pedestals, make it symmetrical. If you had one here, make sure you have one there and that way. Sometimes you cannot, it cannot be helped. Sometimes it's going to be, um, sometimes it's not going to be symmetrical, but that's fine as long as you try your hardest to make it as symmetrical as you can. All right, so we got that. Let's have a look at the, uh, look in here to find out where we place them. So we're going to have the arcane stone bricks and then that. And there is an air block between this, isn't there? So uh, between there, we have that on top, which goes above them. Okay. So we want these guys to go here. There we go. Cool, cool. And then these on top. Great success. And above this, because we need an air block here. Oh, oh come in. <laughs> we need an air block. There we go. We want to have our runic matrix on top of here, like this. Brilliant. All right. Now, I don't think I have enough aspects in my wand to activate this, but we'll give it a try. Uh, no, I think we need a certain amount to perform the activation. Let's have a look. Symmetry, yes, we know all that stuff. I think we need, I think it was 25 of, yeah, 25 of everything needs to be in there before we can do that. And I'm missing a few bits. So I'm going to go and find my nodes and we'll activate this. Okay, here we go. So I'm all enough in there and poof, brilliant. So we've got our infusion altar ready, set and good to go. Nice. And I should probably turn this off as well. Where is it? I went to the auto one. Uh, off. Brilliant. There we go. So, before we can do any type of infusion, we need to place down some items that will make it so that we can reduce the chance of instability. Now, different types of infusions have different types of instability. Some can be very high, some can be very low, some can be moderate. But by placing kind of relics, items around that reduce instability, you you bring down the chance of anything going a little bit skew with, <laughs> which is very bad. Now there are a few things that you can use. Mob heads are one of them, but I only have one mob head, so I'm not actually going to place that one down because that would be bad because that wouldn't that would uh, that would ruin the symmetrical feel of it whereas candles are a really good way of doing this now one thing to bear in mind is when it comes to placing down the artifacts and there are three different types that you can place well four really you can place candles of any type you can place shard clusters of any type you can also place mixed shard clusters which is kind of the fourth one and you can place any type of mob head that's kind of how you do it but all of them give you the same amount of reduction towards instability so you could have all of them as white candles you could have the whole area as white candles and it'd be just as good as having 10 white candles 10 red candles 10 shard clusters 10 heads you can do it that way it really depends on how fancy you want it to look because if you all have just loads of white candles it's probably going to look fairly rubbish <laughs> so you kind of want to weigh up the uh, the looks as far as the uh, functional <laughs> aspect behind it all right so we've got our magic tallow so i'm going to use some of this to make some candles because i think these are pretty good and they're pretty easy to make so we want some of you and that will give us a load of candles good stuff brilliant and we're also going to want to color some of these if we can so let's get some rose red and some dandelion yellow and if we've got anything else to can color it i got some black candles haven't i, I got some of you I can use some of this there we go. And I'm pretty sure when we colour this, we only get one. But I don't know if the colour... I think the colour does actually... It possibly might make a difference, the colour. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it reads the colour, actually. That's a, that's a good one. Whether it just reads candle. But they have got a different... Uh, they have got a different ID when you change it to a different colour. So I'm guessing it would do. Let's have a look at Azur. Does Azur give us a colour? It does give us a light grey. Okay, let's grab some Azur. 
cool, cool. We'll change this all into die. Brilliant. And I would like to get some other colours. Let's see if we've got... Haha! <laughs> Alright. Grab some of you. And some of you. And some of you. If we can get three of every one, then we can make sure that we keep it symmetrical. Sorry for you. And you. And you. Oh, look at that place over there. It's horrible. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to venture in there one day as well. It's going to be pretty scary stuff. All right. So, let's make some candles. So, we've got four of those. Let's have four of those and four of those. Good stuff. And maybe we'll make some mixed shard clusters. I don't really want to because I don't think I have enough shards. Hmm. And we need six for each type. I was kind of, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to hang on to my shards because I would like to keep them for making other stuff. Although we do have a lot of earth shards. We could probably use up some earth shards, I guess. Let's do that. Let's get some earth shards. There we go. Grab two of you. And... Hmm, no. But we could make some mixed. Let's make some mixed. So we want you. And you. And you. And you. And you. And you. Cool. Gives us a few mixed as well. Alright. So let's go and place down our uh, our relics. I like to call them. I like to call them relics. I think that's a cool way to put them. Now there are a couple of other things that you could use as well. Back in the older versions of Formcraft, nodes and nitor and things, but you can't use those anymore in these ones. So you can only use the candles, the shards, the sharded clusters, and the heads. So you've got to find a good place to put them. Now because they work the same way as in being able to reach the Essentia. Uh, they stand by the same rule that's 12 out from the matrix, 10 up from the matrix, and I'm not sure about below, but I think it's 5 going down. So as long as you're within that radius, it's going to count towards providing a reduction on instability. Now I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them around the bottom, because I think this would be kind of cool to have it. So if we had like one there, and then one there, and eventually we'll have tons more of these, but we need to make sure we keep it as... Uh, symmetrical as possible. So I'll have you there and you there. Now we've got the red one, so let's put a red one there. And here. And there. Oh, no. That's bad. Now that there. Alright, we've got the black ones. And I'm not sure if I want to put anything actually up here or keep it all below, because I think the idea behind this was to have it all below. So if we put a black one... Oh, there and there. There we go. And there. That looks good. We can have our shards. So where are we going to put our shards? Uh, it's going to look a little bit off because we've only got two of them from the way that I've been doing this. But <laughs> hey ho. Let's put a shard. And having one item would be classed as uh, could be classed as symmetrical. You can have things coming up the sides as well and have them like coming around the edges. So there's like tons of ways that you can do this. I think for the shards, I wonder if I can place them on here. Although I did use slabs. Haha, -ha, we can. Brilliant. All right, so we'll have one there, and that means we need one over that side, pointing outwards. So we can have one like here, and then you there. And you there. <laughs> nice. All right. So we've used up what we have at the minute. Obviously, we can make much more to uh, help with the instability. But for the time being, that's going to work all right. I think that's going to help us nicely. The amount of the arcane pedestals that I've put down at the minute is far more than you're generally going to be using for a lot of the stuff. That's kind of worst case scenario right there. But I thought I would at least get all of them, so that way if we ever do have to make the bigger things, we've got them there, ready to be used, which is kind of the most important thing. So, and I'm hoping it's going to reach, I think it will, because I think it's five, so that would be like, what, that would be uh, one, two, three going down? One, two, three, four, about four-ish? It should be fine. We'll see. I know the, uh, the radius is perfect. Okay, so... Before we finish up today, because we've got this pretty much wrapped and looking good, I was thinking we could make a couple more bits. Yes, 
I would like to make myself some Falmium caps, and I'd like to get them looking good, but I think before we can do that, because we need to make the charged caps, we're going to need Salus Mundus, and Salus Mundus is made in a very strange way. So we're going to grab these, and these are the main reason I got all these beans, is for Salus Mundus. So we can grab one of every type of bean, like this. We're going to make a few of these. There we go, so we've got two of every type, and we're going to make some balanced shards. Balanced shards require Salus Mundus that is then smelted to give you a balanced shard. And if my memory <laughs> is working today, I think I remember how we do this. Alright. Let's have a look. Because we're going to want to make ourselves some charged caps. Because the next thing on the agenda is making a better wand. So to be able to make charged caps, we first need to make the Farmium wand caps. Now by themselves, they're rubbish. They don't do anything. But once they're charged, that's when you can actually use them. To charge them, we need three Salus Mundus on either side. And Salus Mundus is crafted with balanced shards. And balanced shards is two of every type of aspect minus the one of the shard that you're going to throw in. So that's how we're going to do that. So for instance... We pick a shard that we don't want. So what have we got a lot of? We have a lot of earth. So we got earth, so let's throw away our terror, because we're not going to be using that now. And we'll start chucking these in. But we want to make sure that we don't throw in that mana beam. So we've got enough aspects in there now that we should be able to take you and go... There we go. And we used up the perfect amount of aspects so that we don't have any negative effects on any of the uh, bad juju around us. And that gives us our balanced shard. Nice. And we can use these now. We can take them and we can cook them up. There we go. And this will give us our first piece of Sailor's Mundus. How awesome is that? And Sailor's Mundus is actually used in a fair few things. Uh, I don't know if it's used in many shaped recipes. No. But it is used in a lot of stuff. So you want to try and get as much of this as you can. So making sure that you keep your mana bean farm still producing the primal aspects is vital in being able to do that. Oh yeah, look. We've got stuff spawning over here there again now. But I guarantee you, <laughs> guarantee, guarantee you, that nothing will be spawning over here. Yeah, see? Look, night time, zero. Except for that creeper over there, but he spawned over that way. Nothing in this, uh, like, main area. Although stuff is spawning back over there again. It must be the golems. They must work as, like, a player or something like that. That stops stuff from spawning because of the uh, cap on the radius around you. Ha! Huh, that's interesting to know. Hmm. Alright, guys. Well, I think that's going to be that for today's episode. We've got our infusion crafting area created. I'm going to start working on the mountain area so that we can look into creating our crystallized and liquid essence for doing our uh, formic infusions. And in the last ep in the last episode, in the next episode, we're probably going to look into upgrading our wand and getting some infusion-y goodness going. As well as seeing whether our uh, stuff down here has actually done anything. Because obviously these are going to take a long, 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 long time to grow. Like they normally do. But once we start getting into making our energized nodes and being able to transfer the viz via the viz relays, we are going to be in business. <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, I urge you to subscribe for more awesome content. Have yourself a great day. Have a good one, as always. And goodbye.